No intervention or group of interventions reliably prevents delirium. However, multi-component, non-pharmacologic interventions that manage many of the modifiable risk factors appear to reduce the incidence of delirium. In this presentation, we will go over the most common interventions that aim to prevent delirium in the intensive care unit and list the medications that have been studied for use in the prevention of delirium. A number of factors have been identified as causing or contributing to delirium in at-risk patients. Examples of interventions designed to mitigate risk factors for delirium include orientation protocols, cognitive stimulation, facilitation of physiologic sleep, early mobilization, visual and hearing aids, selecting appropriate medication choice, pain management, and avoiding and treating medical complications. It is important to maintain orientation for critically ill patients. Provision of clocks, calendars, windows with outside views, and verbally reorienting patients may help the patient in reorientation to date, time, and surroundings. This may mitigate confusion that results from disorientation in unfamiliar environments. Patients with cognitive impairment, in particular, may benefit from activity, such as regular visits from family and friends. At the same time, Sensory overstimulation should be avoided, particularly at night. Familiar TV shows, Quran recitation, or music therapy may help in cognitive stimulation. To facilitate physiologic sleep, nursing and medical procedures, including the administration of medications, should be avoided during sleeping hours when possible and care should be clustered. Nighttime noise should be reduced and lights should be dimmed. One randomized trial found that the use of earplugs at night was associated with a lower incidence of confusion in intensive care unit patients. To promote wakefulness during the day, the use of natural lights and opening of the blinds are encouraged. Minimizing the use of restraints along with having a mobilization program for early mobility and occupational therapy may help in reducing the incidence of delirium. One study in mechanically ventilated, critically ill patients found that early institution of physical and occupational therapy, along with consequent interruption in use of sedatives, was associated with a lower number of hospital days with delirium. The use of eyeglasses and magnifying lenses for visual impairment, and hearing aids and earwax disimpaction for hearing disturbances, may help in the prevention of delirium in those patients. Medications can commonly contribute for the development of delirium in critically ill patients. Most of the evidence on which drugs cause delirium comes from reports of adverse effects rather than systematic research. Drugs with anticholinergic properties, such as tricyclic antidepressants and traditional high-dose neuroleptics, are a high-risk group for delirium. Other drugs, such as benzodiazepines, sedatives, Dopamine-activating drugs, antiepileptics, histamine H2 receptor blockers, digitalis and analgesics, are also associated with delirium, but less frequently. To prevent delirium, involve the pharmacist in reviewing the medication list and avoid medications that contribute to delirium, such as benzodiazepines and opioids, and use the least amount of sedatives and analgesics for the shortest time. Medical care should be optimized to prevent delirium. Drains, Foley catheters, peripheral venous and central venous catheters should be discontinued as soon as possible. Ensure adequate hydration of the patient and adequate oral or tube feeding intake. Monitor and ensure adequate oxygenation and encourage lung expansion with deep breathing and coughing. Ensure adequate pain control and use non-opioids like acetaminophen and non-pharmacological methods. Prevent and manage constipation with adequate fiber and fluid intake and assess for urinary retention and use intermittent catheterization when needed. Infection prevention measures should be implemented and infections should be actively monitored for and treated when identified. Various medications have been studied for delirium prevention in high-risk settings, but evidence of their effectiveness is limited. Cholinesterase inhibitors, 
such as rivastigmine and dompazil, have not effectively reduced delirium and are linked to increased side effects. Antipsychotic agents offer inconsistent and modest benefits. Dexmedetamidine shows mixed results, with some studies indicating reduced postoperative delirium. Gabapentin, in a pilot study, appeared to reduce delirium by decreasing pain and opioid use. The efficacy of melatonin and its agonists is inconsistent across studies. Finally, while analgesics like ketamine might reduce delirium incidence in some cases, their use is not consistently beneficial and is sometimes associated with adverse effects. Overall, there is no conclusive evidence supporting the broad use of these medications for preventing delirium in high-risk settings. Thank for watching. We will discuss medication use in the management of delirium in the next presentation.